Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to part five to the platform shooter tutorial series using GameMaker Studio 2. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use finite state machines to improve the artificial intelligence for our enemies, make them work a little bit better than they do currently. Let's get started. So open up your enemy object if you don't already have that open and you can see here inside of our enemy object that we have our step event and this this event runs the code that moves our enemy around in the room now we may want to have an enemy that stops right before the player and starts shooting bullets at them that seems like it would make sense for this type of game since our enemies can fly uh, we may want to have enemies that just run right into the player as well, but you guys already know how to do this because you can see we have the code right here that shows you guys how you would just make the enemy run right into the player. So let's make an enemy that's a little bit different from this and will actually stop before it reaches the player. Now one thing you might do is you might come into the create event and we'll actually go through this. You might say uh, chase equals false well chase equals true attack equals false okay so you might create some variables like this and then come into your step event and say if chase equals true And then tab this in like this, run this code, else if attack equals true, run our attack code, and for this maybe we just won't do anything, right? And then you might say, okay, well how do we switch between these two? We might say, if point distance can we do distance if distance to object we'll use that one o underscore player is greater than 64 48 is greater than 48 we'll just try that chase equals true attack equals false else attack equals true chase equals false and then run the game You can see the enemies, they get as close until they're about 48 pixels away, and then they stop moving. Then if you move outside their range, they'll start chasing you again. So this works pretty well, actually. But the problem comes up when you start to get a lot of different cases. Uh, and then you have all these extra variables right here and your step event gets giant you know where you're doing tons of stuff inside the step event uh, let's say you wanted another one here where your enemies were in a hurt state right so uh, if they're hurt maybe they take knockback during their hurt state hurt equals false then you then it starts to get really complicated you have to be like okay well inside of here you'd say well if if hurt then if hurt equals true or false then we can run this but if hurt is equal to true then we don't want to run this any we want to run some different code and we have to have an else down here and it just starts to get really ugly when you start to have more and more 
basically situations that come up and you have all these checks like this if statements all over the place. So I'm going to show you guys how you can fix this using a finite state machine. And there's lots of different ways to do finite state machines. So don't think that this is the only way to do a finite state machine. Some people use scripts for them. I've done that in the past. Some people use uh, some people use switch statements for them. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Switch statements aren't actually that bad of a way to handle finite state machines. But because this we're using the trial version of GameMaker Studio 2, I'm actually going to show you how to do it using the user events that are attached to objects. You can create your own user events. So let me show you how to do this. First, the very first step we're going to take is we're going to copy this code right here. I'm going to do control X and I'm going to add a new event other user events user event 0. Now note that the 0 right there because that's important there's 15 well 16 different user events starting at 0 and ending at 15 so we're going to be limited to 15 different states for this object but that should or 16 but that should be plenty and it's better to use user events, I think, in GameMaker Studio 2 because it keeps all of the logic for your object inside of the object events right here. You don't have to go searching through your scripts to try and find your states. I think it's a good way to do it, but you still avoid having a giant step event. It separates your logic out in a nice way. And since GameMaker Studio 2 allows you to add descriptions here, we can add a really nice description. So we can call this movement state. And then just paste this code right in here for our movement state. Okay, that's really cool. But if we run the game, you're going to notice that it doesn't actually move anymore. Our enemies just sit there. The reason is because we put this inside of a user event. And a user event is like your own event but it doesn't actually ever happen. You have to run the event in code. And the way we would do that is we'd come back into our step event right here and we'd say event user zero. Remember the zero here? This tells it which event to run. So now inside of our step event, it, every single frame of the game, it will run this event, the user event down here. And if we run the game, you can see we're moving again, but they're not stopping anymore. So let's create a new event, add an event, other user events, user event one. And for our description on this one, we'll name this one uh, attack state. Okay. And obviously for now, we're not going to actually have anything inside of here. But how do we change this so that it runs the attack state when we're uh, a certain distance away? Well, we could do this. We could say if uh, distance to object, object player is greater than uh, 48, run user event 0, else run user event event holy cow event user one like this so we can say well this is our move and this right here is our attack and we run the game and it works but this can have some similar issues to our what we were doing before uh, it is a little bit more organized, but if we have a hurt state, then it starts to get a little more complicated because how do we determine this logic in conjunction with the hurt state? We have to do some more if statements. Doesn't really work. So what we want to do, and this is the secret to a finite state machine, we can get rid of these now, is create a variable And we can e we can use an enum for this. I'm I, I'm a little conflicted with enums just because they're global scope. So then we have to say something like enemy states like this. 
you know, to be specific with this enemy. So I'm a little conflicted with enums, but you know, they are a really good way to do this. So I'm going to I'm going to show you how to do this with an enum. So well, since this is a beginner video, I might not actually do enums yet. We'll just we'll just leave them cuz they sound really scary. They're really not, but so we're going to create some variables here. I'm going to create one called movement underscore and I'm going to use all capital letters right here to signify that this variable shouldn't actually change. It should always stay the same. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. Then I'm going to do another one here and say attack and set this one equal to 1. Okay? And you can see these correspond with our user events right here that we have set up. Now inside of our step event, uh, instead of doing this, we could say movement and attack. And they're more descriptive. But what we actually want to do is we want to take this logic right here and we want to move where this logic is located. So we're going to say, uh, well, but first we need to create another variable inside of here. So we're going to create another variable and we're going to just call this variable state. We'll set it equal to, we'll set this one after we set our states, state we'll set this equal to movement okay so state is now equal to movement which is equal to zero so our current state is movement we're in our movement state now inside the step event we're just gonna run that state event user state so what does this do it kinda jumps around a little bit so pay attention but we're running the event user state. Now state is equal to movement which is equal to zero so we're gonna run our movement state. And you can see when we run the game it will just run movement but it won't switch between the movement and the attack state. It just constantly runs the movement state. So how do we tell it to switch to the attack state? Well we can come into our movement code and we can use that same bit of code logic that we we're doing before. We can say if distance to object o underscore player is greater than sorry since we're in the movement we want to do less than is less than 48 state equals attack okay that allows us to change states so we're running our movement code they're chasing the player and then all of a sudden they get close enough to the player they're like oh we need to change state so we set state to attack well what happens inside our step event it then runs state which is equal to attack which is equal to one which will then run our attack state which doesn't do anything so now you can see when they get close enough they stop moving but they don't actually ever stop start moving again because we don't have the logic in the attack state that starts them moving again. So we can come into our move state, copy this right here, then come into our attack state and paste it right here. And we can say if state is greater than or equal to 48, sorry, if our distance to the object is greater than or equal to 48, state equals movement. And we'll switch back. That way all of the logic for your current state is inside of the user event and not anywhere else. So when you're debugging, if you get a bug when the player's in the movement state, you know exactly where you need to look in your code. You can just come into here and look inside of here because all of the logic is inside of this user event. It shouldn't be anywhere else, so you'll know to look inside of here. Okay, we're going pretty good with our states here. Let's actually add another state. Let's add a hit state. And we'll set this equal to 2. Then we'll add a new event, other, user events, user event 2, hit state. Now inside of the hit state, we want the 
we want the enemy to maybe we want the enemy to blink or maybe to be a different color or something during this state only we can do that let's try adding some knockback very first though so we'll say if they get hit by the bullet let's add a little bit of knockback here we'll say state equals hit and we'll say h speed we have multiple h speeds here right h speed and h speed push let's actually do h speed push for knockback doesn't matter which one you do h speed push equals well let's get a direction that we want the knockback to go so var dir equals point direction and the direction we want to point is from the bullet to us because that will knock us the same direction well actually the direction we want to point is the direction the bullet is heading in so let's look at our bullet object real quick and see what we used looks like we used the actual built-in direction for this bullet which makes sense because it doesn't need very special collision detection so we'll just say our direction is equal to the bullets or other dot direction Then we can say our h speed push will be equal to length dir and our length, yep, length is first. Our length, this is how fast we want the knockback to be. So maybe we want the knockback to be, I don't know, 8. That should be enough knockback, I would think. So we'll say 8, and then the, di the direction is obviously dir v speed push equals length dir y 8 dir okay so we're getting the direction that we want to knock this enemy object now inside of our hit state inside of our movement state here we have move push obviously and we have move we also want to do the same thing Let's check our move push. Yep. We also want to call move push inside of our, was that the, that's our, this is our friction right here for the move push. So we're going to actually just copy this whole thing for the push force. Control C. We're going to come into user event 2 and we're going to do control V. So when we call move push right here, it will update the enemy's position. And then uh, when we call this right here, that will apply a friction to that knockback force, basically. And then finally, once we leave this state, or we do want to eventually leave this state, or else the enemies will be stuck in the hurt state. So let's, let's just try this and see what this does. So we hit a bullet, we, we change states right here. We change states right here. We update our H speed and V speed push variables. And, and we inside of our hurt state like this. And then inside of our hurt state, it actually moves us and, and adds friction to that. So let's just watch this, see how it looks. And you can see the enemies can now take knockback when you hit them with a bullet, which feels really cool. But they never actually come back out of the hit state. Or the hurt state. Yeah, the hit state. That's correct. Okay. So they're not coming out of the hurt state, so we need to do that. Uh, and the best way to do this, I think, is just to check their H speed push and their V speed push. And then use those to determine whether or not we should return to the movement state. So we'll say if point distance 0 0 h speed push v speed push 
is less than 1. We can't check if it's equal to 0 because this technically approaches 0, but it will never actually reach 0. So if it's less than 1, state equals move state. And this should movement. And this should allow us to, inside of our hurt state, return back to the move state once the knockback has worn off. You can see that is the case. I'm curious to see how, since we're using the h-speed push, how that will be affected when the enemies get too close to each other. They kind of push off of each other, which is really cool actually. And there you go. We've got a basic finite state machine using user events that allows us to add a, like a knockback state, a hit state. We've got an attack state, even though we're not creating bullets right now. Should be pretty easy to do that. We'll be doing that in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and share it on Facebook or Twitter. And I will talk to you guys later.